Right, so welcome to this video. It's going to be about how I went from kind of like the worst race I've ever had to some of the best races I've ever had and the kind of training I did. So to be honest, like if I go through the whole year's training, it's kind of too much. So I thought I'd just go through four weeks of like mega intensive training and kind of try and get some benefits that you could take away. So I did the Ras Moon. Uh, it was like an Easter weekend race. Uh, it was pretty disastrous all around. Um, you can see like not unreal numbers. Like I felt pretty ill um then i had some time off i like went skiing which was really nice so i had like four days off the bike five days off the bike maybe and then i started riding again so what i got told was that i had tour of albania which started on the 22nd of may which we can zoom down to like here and then i had tour of mauritius afterwards so basically the, the plan was to have a massive peak for tour of albania um and mauritius with them being a week apart i thought to be honest like if I've got a good form, I'll be able to keep it. So when I got told about this, the sort of um, tour, tour of Albania, like this, the uh, the stages, basically you just got told it's going to be quite hilly. Um, but on stage one, uh, I'm trying to find the, the profile. Here we go. It's going to be a 30 minute climb. So I was like, OK, should suit me ish. Um, and there's also a climb early on, but it's not as big as it you think it is because it goes through a tunnel but nonetheless you can see <clears throat> a climb a, a stage on paper that should suit me we'll get into kind of the results later because i have to say the racing wasn't perfect but the training and the preparation beforehand was probably the best i've ever had um so really what i was focusing on was just boosting my threshold as much as possible and also increasing my fatigue resistance which generally i think i'm quite good at so the general focus was doing three days on one day off um with uh two days of intensity uh normally sorry three days of intensity per week so <clears throat> this is the first one so this is some six minute intervals that i did um again nothing too crazy um i think these were like sort of 350s ish um oh the internet is so, uh, so yeah these were some intervals i did i don't think they were great to be honest uh, i'm trying to look they're like five minutes at like 350 ish so nothing too crazy but again, they were decent. Oh, I remember this one. I was going to do six minutes, but the road I was going to do six minutes on was closed. So these were like 350. The last one was a bit soft, but it was okay. Um, the following day, I did some more efforts. These were just like standard sort of like a bit of threshold. Like I generally try and do the second day not as hard as the first day. So a little bit easier. Then I did five hours and I did a lot of heat prep stuff. So what I do is I just go on the turbo, wear about a million layers and then have it as high as possible. I was trying to use my heart rate monitor as kind of proxy for temperature um, so, because I don't I don't couldn't monitor my temperature. So you can see here, like I was doing 140 watts, 135 heart rate. So it was decent, but I wouldn't really say it was warm enough. Um, I got better and I wore more clothes and wore, wore more um, and had the heating on. Um, then I had a race, which was a two, three, four, which I believe I came. This is, to be honest, uh, I'm kind of confused. But anyway, um we then went to the next week again so we had like some three minute intervals um which were actually okay for me i find this duration of intervals very difficult mainly because i don't think i'm mega good on the punchy stuff um but these ones again were like if we kind of go 370 370 so these were kind of all done about 120 percent of threshold this was a little bit softer but all in all not horrendous and i did uh some kind of other effort uh at Burrington, but these were decent okay they weren't great but what we can see is that like my vo2 definitely not where it needs to be um but the other ones were okay um i then did these the following week the following day after so again it's like just doing back-to-back -back efforts i think i used to be a bit more hesitant about doing it because i thought oh you need to do intervals when you're feeling really fresh <clears throat> but actually it was fine um so this one i did 330 330 uh 332 and the last one I did 3.30 as well. So all in all, pretty good. Um, that's kind of like five and a half watts per kilo for me. Um, my weight on here is probably wrong. Um, and then again, I did, didn't do four hours then, but did some more heat prep. And then I did a nap B, which was actually a real good, I didn't get a great result. Um, it was a pretty hard course, but what it showed me was that my numbers are actually quite good. And I was getting better and better um, throughout the block. So if we look at the first 20 minutes of this race, I believe was about like 350 normalized or something but the first like hour um was was really really hard 
and what it showed to me at least was like I could, if I can do 320 normalized for an hour I'm definitely getting in in better condition um, and I was actually quite happy with how the legs were the, the next day I had five hours backing it up um, with just some tempo again I don't really think the tempo does too much in terms of fatiguing you I think it's just a good way of like ensuring that uh, you get the efforts done I think maybe I only did one oh, I did I don't know what this ride was uh Oh yeah, I do remember this. I think I was a bit cooked, and so I only did one effort, to be honest, and the rest of them I think I just, I binned off, and I went to the gym. That was the other thing I should talk about, is that the gym, I reintroduced that, just because I know that it can be really good for me to go to the gym, especially just to try and gain a bit more punch. Um, I don't think it helps my threshold a mega amount, but I think it does help, uh, um, it does help my punch for sure, so you can see I started going to the gym again. I think I only went I didn't go that week. I only started going this week. Um, so I generally like to do it so that there's at least two days between um, me doing the gym and then my next hard session. So normally I try and do it on the day after uh, the mega hard race. So you can see like here again, um, we do an hour to the gym and then you have three days afterwards. So again, five hours heat prep, no stress. Um, these were really promising as well. I saw Arno Dali do it. He did like five hours with seven two minute max efforts. Well, I don't know if they were max, but they were two minute efforts for sure. Um, so I thought actually that looks quite a good session, trying to gain a bit more um, of an anaerobic punch. Now my gears were slipping all over the place. So they weren't great to begin with, like 432. This one was like a disaster. Um, and then I did like 417. Uh, anyway, I did about that. And then the last one I cracked out 470 watts, um, which was like five hours in. So I was pretty happy about that. I was like, again, some of my best, not my best ever two minute power, but not far off at five hours deep. So again, the numbers were like just getting better and better. Um, and this is really when I started to feel the benefits of the base I think that I'd done before and that I'd had some time off. And then when I started to train again, you could see my VO2 efforts were not where you'd expect them to be necessarily. And these ones again, I, I've kind of copied them from Chris Room. So it's like four minutes pretty hard um, above threshold so for me, like 360 watts and then 16 minutes at 293. Again, four minutes, 355, 60 minutes, 293. And I just did a 20 minute max effort, um, which was 334 watts, which was my best 20 minute power since my crash, which was good. Um, I kind of broke lots of bones, including my leg and back and brain. Well, I don't really break my brain, but anyway, I had quite a bad crash. And I'd done 350 for 20 before, but I hadn't actually done numbers that similar. Um, but yeah, doing that again, okay. It was like, it was a lot of waiting around. So it wasn't like actually fatigued. It was still like three hours into a ride um but yeah it was just kind of promising it was just like yeah actually i am going well and then i did five hours again like i just think the endurance for me just doing five hours really helps um like you can see this week was pretty big 27 hours and then i had a road race here which i finished uh ninth i got in the break and then just kind of messed up the tactics at the end um really i mean the issue with me is that i just have zero sprint um but again 300 normalized for uh, two and a half hours again goes to show that I'm going well like basically five watts per kilo for two and a half um, hours is very very good um, for me at least and 43 and a half k an hour so it was decent decent day out right so that week 27 hours 1200 TSS um, so yeah very strong we had one two three days of intensity and gym two heat prep rides so it was going pretty well um, and again you can see there's nothing like magic here but I think it just goes to show the numbers are getting better and better. Um, this is really when I started to feel a bit more fatigued. So on Monday, um, I was doing some intervals. I actually punctured, which was really annoying because I couldn't, I couldn't finish them off. Again, I rode for two hours and then did them towards the end of the ride just to make sure they're fatigued. First one, 322, 322, uh, 323. Uh, and then the last one I did was 324. These were pretty tough, I'm not going to lie. And then I was supposed to do one more, but I got a puncture and I was like, oh, uh didn't have a I can't remember why I didn't have but anyway it was kind of a disaster um and then I went to the gym as well which again you can see I'm not doing a crazy amount I was just doing squat leg press single leg press I'm not going mental um and then this was like five hours which I've been off I assume I was kind of feeling tired um and then these were like my last couple efforts really so I did some 40 20s on Monday which were the first time I really started to feel some fatigue in the in the training, to be honest, I think up till then I had felt very fresh and I don't really think there was any issue. Um, and you can see the first one I did 340 average, then I did 340 average, which is kind of good for me, and then 321 average. Um, 
and then I, I sacked it. I was like, nah, I don't think I'm, there's any point in me doing any more. Um, and then I did some minute max efforts. This was like a six hour ride. So it was kind of like maybe not the best use of my time in some ways. I think sometimes doing mad hours afterwards is not the best, but you can see again, the minute power is not really where I wanted to be. It was like 530, 520, um, 500. I really should be doing at least 600 on the first one and then like 509 on the last one. So it's okay, but it wasn't, it wasn't crazy and ended like four hours afterwards um, and then went to the gym. And then what I did for my last ride, which was actually the, the worst ride I did um, in terms of this was when I actually felt ill and it was really annoying um, that I got ill literally before Albania because it really it sounds like a lot of excuses, but it really did mess up. Albania and Mauritius and for me um so we kind of did I did some efforts on this ride you can see again like um 223 normalized for six hours 20 um if we look at some of the peak powers they were decent so I did like five minutes 342 um and 10 minutes at like 330 towards the end um so again it was like decent numbers can't really complain too much um like that deep into a ride um so yeah that was a really good ride but I started to feel ill and this is really where it went downhill. So I think the training, to be honest, up till this point was perfect. Um, I was getting basically stronger every week. I think you could say this this bit was just a little bit too much like for a four week block. But I do think in general it was fine. Um, like, you know, in my third week were the best numbers I have, I've done, like ever really. Um, so I like, especially this race, I'd, I'd never done 300 ones for that long before. So I was, I was like really happy. Um, in terms of like how well I'd been going and recovering that far. Um, I also lost like a one and a half kilos in this thing, which I was kind of like happy about. So I was like got from like 61 and a half to about 60. Um, so that was good. Like I didn't, I didn't go crazy on the getting lean cause I just wanted to do the numbers. And then from then on, I just started to taper. So you can see I did two hours easy and the tapers really well. Like I think is the hardest thing. And I think that's where the magic is made. I think anyone can do training quite well, but I think the taper is really where it's so hard to make sure you have the right fatigue because I think you often want more fatigue than you expect. Um, and then this was the 20 minute test when I knew I was absolutely cooked. Um, and it was it was pretty sad to be honest because it like everything was literally going perfectly. And then I did this 20 minute test and you might say, okay, you did 332, like, isn't that fine? But like, the sensations of breathing were so bad and again it it just looks on paper like I just went out too hard I did like 346 watts for the first like 12 minutes which is kind of where I thought I'd be I think I thought I'd be like 350 ish and then you can see the last the last eight minutes for 311 watts but I was just could barely breathe really um and that was kind of annoying and again that is just illness and you could say okay that is your fault because you train too much uh and you know that's why you got ill but like you can see it's some of my best ever like 20 minute sorry 10 minute power um basically which is good and my 20 minute it was the second best of 2023 but if we go for all time as well you'll see that it was actually like a pretty pretty decent performance um in comparison to like what i had done previously obviously like 2019 was on a different power meter so it's kind of hard to compare but you can see again like uh 2018 2023 um, was that one I was talking about 2023 as well. So it was like 2023 had actually been a decent go in terms of I was getting to 330 watts, no stress. Um, but yeah, so then that was kind of all fine. Um, and that was kind of when I knew I was cooked. The day after, I then literally sacked off this tape and was like, I literally just need to get better. I still wanted to ride because people were like, you shouldn't ride. I was like, but if I don't ride, I know I will feel terrible on day one. Um, but anyway, day one was a disaster. I crashed, like had to have stitches in my elbow, uh, lost, yeah, like literally disastrous, lost like half an hour of time. So it was all like kind of irrelevant, um, all this training <laughs> because the one, the thing I was really like, oh, I want to do well on, um, I died. Like you can see here from this part onwards, I was all on my own. Um, but you know, it was still okay. Like I still did, um, five minutes at 360, which I think was my best of the year um or whatever and that was on the on the first climb and I felt okay but every time I went really hard I just couldn't breathe that well so it was kind of a bit disappointing um you can see that two and a half minutes so 390 is not that crazy at all um but yeah like I think and then it kind of went on to Mauritius and again I just did some maintenance stuff 
um and Mauritius obviously like, had some good good days some bad days um but yeah conclusion uh what can you take away from this i would say like if you can three days of intensity a week is optimal that's what i think is is the best i think you can get away with less but i don't see why you would if you can recover from it i think three days is optimal four is just kind of pointless i did four here and that was not good and i think i did four uh yeah i did four on this week and that also wasn't great either so i do think three is optimal four is fine for an overload week but nothing more um big hours i think is fine if you have time and can recover from them um but yeah that's what i'd say and i'd also say going to the gym is good to try and get the punch like especially um like after most just i then did a thousand watts which is like my best numbers ever if we go through just like the pure results so albania was kind of not good until stage three I managed to top 10 that which was really good i got in the break and then basically it was like a bunch sprint um so it was fine you can see like all these people were in the break um so yeah it was like it was okay um it wasn't crazy um and then the rest of the time i was just working for max because max won the overall which is mega um so a lot of time just working on the front so it didn't didn't have to go crazy um this day i punctured in mauritius which was kind of annoying got 28th which is all right but it's not i really should have been more more up here to be honest um but anyway and then won the team time trial i didn't pull that much because i didn't have a tt bike and also didn't feel great and then these two days uh worked on the front and got dropped on the climb which was kind of annoying but it is what it is this one eighth in the bunch sprint so it was okay and yeah i think in terms of my preparation i was pretty happy how it went it was just a shame that i got ill the day before um at the moment i've got tour of martinique coming up which again i think should go well um i actually feel a lot better i did some of my best numbers for 4020s on friday so i'm hoping that the numbers will be good for then anyway cheers for watching hope you did enjoy this uh deep dive into my training i'll see you in the next one